Well, hi there. Marlin and Coral were a pair of clownfish living in an anemone right by the drop-off. Having just laid what appeared to be hundreds of eggs, the two began to discuss names. Marlin, the male clownfish, haphazardly assigned half of the babies to be named Marlin Jr. and half Coral Jr. He divided them not based upon their sex, but simply those on the left and those on the right. When Coral, the female clownfish, expressed that she liked the name Nemo, Marlin declared that one could be named Nemo, but that he would like for most of them to be named Marlin Jr. Why would he be so haphazard in choosing the names for their offspring? Well, a big part of it might be that their offspring were all going to be born male. Now, as you may know, and spoiler alert if you don't know, Coral and all but one of the eggs were lost during a Barracuda-related incident immediately following this conversation about names, leaving only Marlin and the yet unhatched baby Nemo alone on the reef. Now, it may surprise you to discover that all clownfish enter the world as males. But what may surprise you even more is that I fully expect a sequel titled Finding Marilyn to be released any time now because there are female clownfish. And I know that I just said that all clownfish hatch out as males, and this is true. That said, the largest and most dominant clownfish in a given area, which hatched as a male and lived all of its life as a male, now becomes a female. And when that female dies, the next largest male clownfish becomes a female. And this is a great system because there are great benefits to females being large. They can produce either more or larger offspring. Males don't derive that same benefit as even a small male can produce enough sperm to fertilize almost any number of eggs. Now the downside to getting very large is that it takes a long time and you could easily die before you ever get that large. So while getting very large has great benefits for females, it also means that you could die before you ever pass on your genes. That is, unless you were a male while you were small. Which is exactly what happens with clownfish. But you may have noticed that males are often larger than females. This doesn't have to do with being able to produce more sperm. Males tend to be larger when they need to compete physically with other males for access to females. So if they need to fight, then males will be large. But that again comes at the risk of being killed before you ever get large enough to breed, which is a big risk, unless you're a blue-headed wrasse, which all hatch out female with only the largest transforming into males. So interestingly, some animals can switch from being male to female, some from female to male, some are even male and female at the same time, like earthworms, snails, and most plants. Being male and female at the same time is called being a hermaphrodite. So organisms can be male at some points in their life, female at others, or both at the same time. So what is the difference between a male and a female? The size of their gametes. If you're unfamiliar with gametes, you should check out our video on meiosis. But gametes are cells used for sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction means that two or more cells fuse to form a new cell with a combined genome. And most sexually reproducing organisms use gametes of two dramatically different sizes. Large gametes are very likely to survive, but are unlikely to find another gamete with which to fuse. Small gametes are very likely to find another gamete, but they're very unlikely to survive for long. When some individuals produce large, likely to survive gametes, and others produce small gametes that are likely to find the large gametes, success both in terms of finding and surviving becomes quite likely. Individuals that produce small gametes are males. This is why male seahorses are male, even though they are the ones that brood the eggs. Females, on the other hand, are the ones that produce large gametes. They are still females, even if they deposit those large gametes into the pouch of the male. And now you know. If you learned something today, or just want to see Pixar make Finding Marilyn, please like this video. If you'd like to learn more in the future, please subscribe and click the little bell. And we hope to see you real soon.